Good evening, everyone. Well, on a normal Monday, Thursday, we would be celebrating a somber communion together in, in our church in St. Patrick's for the United Benefice. And of course, this Thursday evening, we, we cannot do that. But I want to bring to you a, a short reflection for you to think and pray upon and a short prayer at the end of this. <clears throat> So the Passover is finished, the First Communion is instituted, the foot washing is done, intimacy is about to give way to loneliness and despair. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane is heartrending. We also see just how weak fallen humanity is. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. From Matthew's account in chapter 26. And in these times, there are too many desperately heartrending stories, too many to bear. In fact, I'm sure you're finding that I am too. Just like the disciples asleep at the most critical time, sleep seems a good option, an escape until we wake up and realise the horrible dream is in fact reality. If ever there was a time for us to pray, surely it is now. When we think we are no good at it or don't know what to say or what to do. <clears throat> the reality is that everyone prays sometime or other, even atheists pray when they're desperate. But Romans chapter eight helps us here. <clears throat> It says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. It goes on to say, the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray. For the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. That's chapter 8, verses 23 through to 27. So a few pointers for prayer. Well, I think prayer begins with desperation. Creation has been groaning, says Paul. Currently, there's a, a deep dissatisfaction with the way the world is. Creation is not as it should be. We, we see that every day. There is fear and anxiety everywhere. We are anxious and frightened for our, our family and our loved ones, for our church family, for our friends, maybe even ourselves may not seem noble, but we will pray when we're desperate enough. A lost key, a tax bill that we, we can't pay, fear of, of catching the virus. Well, you know something, this is exactly where we need to be. Prayer only begins when I know that I am not in control. Prayer only begins when I know that I am not in control. I am not the master of my own destiny. I am not a complete version of myself. I lack humility and love and wisdom and forgiveness. Personally, I long for these things in my own life. The great Greek Orthodox saint, Metropolitan Anthony said, intensity and conviction in prayer only comes when our despair is deep enough. I'll say that again. Intensity and conviction in prayer only comes when our despair is deep enough. So desperation is where we start and it's a good place to start. And secondly, frustration. We have this idea that Paul must have got prayer sorted, yet we don't hear of him being caught up in any sort of ecstasy. Instead, he says this, these words, we do not know what to pray with groans too deep for words. Isn't it often the case, I don't know about you, but it certainly is for me, that I just can't find the words to pray. 
I get distracted so easily, head back into social media or the sports pages of the Times, or even think at times, you know, what's the point? Is, is God actually listening? Is this having any impact on the world? Prayer can be deeply frustrating. And yet we might be fooled to think everyone else finds it easy. And I, I'm just a hopeless type of Christian. But you know something? Frustration in prayer is an important stage in learning to pray. Our sighs and groans and cries are when real prayer begins to gain traction. So desperation and frustration are normal and in fact essential to deep, meaningful engagement with God. And thirdly, inspiration. Where do our groans and cries come from? Well, Paul says the Holy Spirit himself, the Spirit intercedes for us. When we turn to the Father in prayer, it is something that the Spirit is doing in us. Our faltering attempts at prayer are, in fact, the Spirit's presence at work in us. Isn't this just a wonderful thought? A desire to pray is a sign that the Holy Spirit is at work in us. A desire to pray, even though it's our babblings and our mumblings, it's a sign that the Holy Spirit is at work in us. Take great comfort and confidence in that. The great theologian Robert Murray said, Groaning is the finest proof I'm a child of God. Groaning is the finest proof I'm a child of God. And then in verse 27 of chapter 8, it explains that the Holy Spirit knows our heart and knows the mind of God and interprets our inarticulate groaning to the Father. So the steps of desperation, frustration and inspiration lead us to transformation. Transformation. Miraculously and wonderfully, God weaves our prayers into the ordering of his world. He does it through our work. Bread needs to be made, hospitals need to be cleaned, shelves need to be stacked, viruses need vaccines, machines need to be built, patients need to be healed. But just as God's will for our world is through our human activity, he also weaves our prayers into the governance of his creation. All creation is groaning, it's looking for perfection. And somehow God takes our prayers, weaves them into something very special with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and brings recreation into the world. Isn't it such a remarkable thought that God will take our inarticulate ramblings and use them to change things in his world? We somehow join in the divine conversation between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Spirit interprets, Jesus intercedes, and God listens and acts. And so the whole goal of prayer for us is communion with God, the primary and most fundamental need for our souls. Amen. Well, let us pray for a few moments as we recall Jesus in the garden, alone, desperate, crying out to his father while his best friend slept. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, my heart is heavy as I join you on your journey to the cross. Gethsemane has come to our hospitals. Golgotha casts its shadow across our land. Lead us through the darkness of these days to the light and life of Easter once again. And at this time of such foreboding, I yield to the promise of Jesus who addresses my darkest fears with this beautiful assurance. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And a closing prayer. Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way, Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say.
Amen.